Yo, what is going on guys? We are back today for another Alliance War, the 11th war technically of season 19. So it's the second last war that I'm going to be uploading. Uh, and the last war won't be uploaded for a little while because I'm actually leaving tomorrow morning to head out to the lake. But a little something different today, uh, I'm going to go through my path before we actually join up. So there's that Medusa and that Aegon on path number eight. Then we jump to path number five and for section two, we got this Korg here that looks pretty tough. Uh, and then a Rhino and an Iceman on path five, the um, Ebb and Flow Intercept. So yeah, let me know if you guys would like to see me do that every war, just scout it first and then join. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was what I was assigned so far. There's also can be mini bosses at the end and everything, but right now this is my fights. So I'm gonna be bringing Human Torch, Omega Red, and Sabertooth. So I, I really like this team. This might be my favorite Alliance War team, just because, you know, Human Torch, I'm extremely comfortable with. Uh, just so comfortable with Human Torch. And, you know, I, I always thought of myself as a, just like above average Omega Red player. But over the last two seasons, like just watching my Omega Red gameplay, I don't know if I've just gotten a lot better with him because I've been using him so much, but I feel like my Omega Red gameplay is like pretty, pretty good now. So I'm also extremely confident with him in Alliance War. I don't think... Uh, I've ever died with Omega Red and Alliance War since I've been with four Loki. Yeah, my deaths have been with Magic, Human Torch, Corvus, Cast of America, um, and Red Guardian. Those are all my deaths before Loki. So I haven't died with Omega Red yet, so my soul array with Omega Red is 100% technically, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, one death with Human Torch, uh, unfortunately against the Mojo boss, but let's not get into that. Uh, this first fight here is Medusa. These nodes don't matter for Omega Red. There's some heal block, some passive power, not passive, it's a debuff power lock, but the heal block prevents willpower healing uh, and just some return policy. So if we're nullifying buffs, uh, she's gonna get some power, but Omega Red doesn't really care about any of those nodes. We don't need our power to do damage. Uh, it doesn't matter for heal blocks. It doesn't matter. We're not nullifying buffs, so it's a breezy fight. Uh, next up here we have an Aegon. This blood in the water node I was a little bit worried about. Uh, while we're suffering from a debuff, he's going to have 200% increased uh, attack. So uh, I was a little bit worried about this. Because, uh, you know, Aegon also when you hit him, he gets a bunch of those furies. So I was just worried he was going to hit a little hard. So start the fight off with a clean intercept. I'm going to go for uh, my first parry here and we're going to see how much damage it does. But he feels a heavy attack. So I haven't even had to take a parry yet. They're right there at the parry, taking 900 damage, which is pretty thick for a parry. But, you know, it's it's all right. One or two 900 parries throughout a fight, no big deal. If that's all the damage I take in a fight, you know, it's pretty good. Um, and, you know, the bleed, we took a little bit of the bleed damage because we're, we're heal blocked, but it's 10% because Omega Red's 90% resistance. So it's not too big of an issue and uh, Aegon falls pretty quick. So yeah, first two fights, easy. Now we move into section uh, two, and this was where I was really worried. So this cork fight, I was, I was very worried about this fight. Uh, so you see, I, I threw on a 30% boost. Uh, I should have popped a potion into Omega Red prior to doing that. Um, that was a mistake. I'm gonna pop a potion into him now, just a, a 3k one. I, I would have done a 3k one before too. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna heal up from the bleed, from uh, double edge from suicides at start. So. Yeah, I, I've taken an Ebony Maw on this fight, and it was it was very sketchy. I I, I I did almost die. Yeah, it was it was a scary fight. It was a really scary fight. I got back in the wall for like a solid thirty plus seconds. So Korg, you know, he's stubborn as well here. So every time he throws a special with that Footloose, he's gonna get the evade and unstoppable effect. Um, and on top of that, every time he hits my block, he's gonna get power. So that's not good. So. Um, right here, you know, this guy had limber, so I was a little bit uh, shaky on throwing heavies because uh, I didn't want to mess mess up and accidentally get hit or something like that. So played it safe, didn't throw the throw the heavies right there. Right here, did a re-parry, but you see all those blocked hits gave him so much power. Uh, like I'm just, I'm I'm a little worried at this point. You know, I'm, I'm getting back against the wall. Things aren't looking too good. Uh, right there, hit another re-parry. But he just keeps throwing off these specials, and I just, I can't keep my spores on him. I'm trying to just parry when he has the uh, these buffs, just to stay close, to keep some spores on him. I, what I really need to do is just get off a heavy attack, locking my degen right here. Finally, perfect scenario. He doesn't throw the special. Boom, we get off the heavy. Right here, I need a beta special because I don't want him to get to a special three. So he get blocked hits. You're going to give him power through the kinetic transference. 
Uh, but there's also an armor break debuffing applied when I'm not hitting him, which is actually nice. Just some willpower healing. So yeah, I'll take that right here. Boom, lock in 10 more spores. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, right here, gonna bait out this special two. And at this point, you know, the fight's looking up. The fight's really looking good. I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. You know, I'm gonna drop the special three, get a little bit of regen, uh, hopefully power drain and uh, deal some damage to through the life steal. So at this point, you know, I'm thinking this fight's over, you know, boom, that's, let's go. Um, but then he throws a special one here, that's annoying. Uh, so I dex the last part of it and he gets the indestructible. Now here, I'm stuck. Um, I'm dexing to get away, but I keep triggering the unblockable, indestructible, and unstoppable. And I'm like, crap, right there I get in a parry. Uh, go for one more combo, but he throws another special one, so the unblockable, boom. Hit the clean, triple L1 evade, and kill him. 99% health finish. That fight, one of my best cork fights. That fight was, oh, that was perfect. That fight could not have gone better. It was a little sketchy at some points, but dude, I was really, really happy with that fight, man. And just getting the full L1 evade at the end, oh, that felt so good. Like normally, I, I, I don't go for the evade unless it's unblockable. Cause I have like a 75% rate of evading it, which is, good but you know that's not guaranteed so you know i usually don't try for it in war but you know if it's unblockable you gotta try so yeah i was really happy that we evaded all that now next up we have rhino on ebb and flow intercept done this fight already you know i'm pretty good at fighting rhino so i'm really not too worried uh everything's going pretty good just keep him against the wall keep close to him so that he doesn't charge so that way he can't go unblockable and you're gonna drop special two just to uh, keep 30 spores on him. Right here, I'm gonna go for a double heavy, but he actually uh, charged, so his unstoppable broke through, but it counted as an intercept. So right here, I get uh, the precision passive. I do my, the full extent of my damage, and he drops fast. Um, <laughs> so that was weird. I, inter I did intercept Rhino, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it, man. So next up here, we have Iceman. And I was originally thinking Omega Red with a regen boost for this fight, and then I was gonna see about using Human Torch for a, a mini boss. But, uh, uh, nah, the Tater, we talked about it, we like, no, just use Torch, use your pre fight here. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I'm still gonna pop a regen boost though, uh, just because, honestly, I've been, my Iceman uh, fighting ability has <laughs> not been good lately. I died to him in the Incursion tournament. And I really shouldn't have. Uh, I just I messed up evading his L1, and ever since then I've just I don't know, man. Just been a little shaky on evading his L1. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna block it. I'm just gonna block his L1 because blocking his L1 with Human Torch, you know, right there, I parry the first hit, and then I build three smolders from it. So that's nice. The block damage is a bit annoying, but you know that's why I popped the regen boost. So yeah, also because I have suicides with Human Torch, that was another reason. Uh, just cause, you know, Human Torch isn't the most suicide friendly. I didn't want to swap my whole master, so just pop the regen boost. Uh, but yeah, this fight's going really well. Uh, you can see I haven't intercepted a single time, but he is dropping like a fly. The Nova Flames from Human Torch are just doing work, and with all the smolders, they're only getting stronger and longer. So yeah, this fight is just going great. Less than a minute, and he goes down. So Iceman down, and at this point, my path was done. You know, I had the opportunity to take a mini boss, but I was like, you know what, man, uh, Taters, you can take it. I don't, like, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I finished my path. I just want to chill for the rest of the night. And then, you know, that's what I was doing. So I went in bed. I was just watching some TV, just chilling. And then I get a message saying, you're up. I was like, oh, crap. Wait, what? <laughs> so the thing boss was brought down to 50%, and I have to go in next. So I was like, okay, give me a sec. I got to get out of bed, wash my face real quick, went upstairs, sat in my specific war spot where uh, I play my best alliance war and uh it's really got in the zone here so thing another thing stubborn boss six star i think it's six starting three no this one's only five sixty five okay uh but yeah so he has fifty percent left so it's basically half of a thing boss fight and you know i'm pretty confident uh again i haven't died with omega red yet i have a hundred percent solo rate with him so i'm i'm pretty confident in my omega red gameplay you know feeling feeling really good with him so what I like to do is push Thing to uh, 13 rock stacks and then use my heavy attack right here. It was 14, but he had enough power to bait out two specials, get rid of all those rock stacks, so that's perfect. Uh, I got I, I really have the spacing down on this fight. I know exactly when I can throw my heavies after his heavies, after his special attacks. 
and yeah, I mean, they're all pretty good. I'm really good at evading his specials as well, even right up against the wall. Uh, the only thing I could have done different in this fight was throw a special two. Uh, I decided not to because the moments where I was going to, his rock stacks just, I would have given him too many. Uh, so right here, I actually get backed in the wall. I cannot evade his heavy against the wall for the life of me. Uh, so I'm just going to throw my special three to get out of the wall. So saving my power uh, ended up being a good thing. Uh, it's also going to give me some regen, so that's nice. You see I'm at 49% and we go all the way up to 67%. So a lot of regen right there from that special 3, which is great. He only has 4% health left. This fight is in the bag as long as I don't make some colossal screw up. Uh, I'm just chilling, trying to get my spores back on him. Uh, I'm going to bait out this special 1 here, I think. I don't know, we're just going to go for it. Get those 10 spores and then, yeah, just go for it. So there's Thing Boss down. Uh, yeah. So we got the cleanup on that. Uh, I I really would love to try taking a full thing boss with Omega Red. I, I think I can do it. I really do. Um, yeah, I'd love to try. But that's going to do it for this war. Now let's go take a look at who won and uh, my stats now for the season. All right, guys. So we're back. And unfortunately, we ended up losing this war. Uh, we had 26 total deaths. They only had 14 uh, they had a tremendous war against us, so yeah, that's unfortunate. Here are the, the MVPs. Let's see, where did I place this war? 18th, not bad. Uh, but now if we go take a look at the stats now for the entire season. So uh, these three wars canceled, so I'm not going to put anything there. This is technically War 11, and I guess I'll, I'll fill in. It's against Sensu as well, i got to do that. Uh, but yeah, so we had, we're now up to 48 kills, two deaths overall for the season, 96% solo rate, uh, adjusted difficulty rating 63, solo rate bonus 8.39, went up a, a good bit that last war, and then my power rating actually went up a ton, it went up over 10 points, and the reason for that is because of the boss kill, I'm pretty sure, same for this, uh, well I guess Empath 5, I think has some of the harder rated fights. Uh, but yeah, so the, my, my total difficulty rating is a 1.27, which is actually the highest. This basically gauges how difficult your fights are, and this is actually the highest in BG3. So that's cool, but again, it's because, you know, I took the last 50% of that boss, which, you know, it, it, in the stats, you know, it basically counts as getting a boss kill, but, you know, it doesn't actually translate to, like, getting a full boss solo. Uh, but, on, you know, on the stats, it makes me look better than I am. Uh, and then we're third in, we moved up from, so we, we were second overall, and then we were fourth overall, and now we're up to third overall in BG3 and in four Loki overall for the power rating stat alone, which is pretty good. This is like pretty much the same power rating I finished last season with, <laughs> which is pretty crazy, um, but because uh, we know we've missed so many wars. But yeah, we got one more war left, uh, but I will be gone for this uh, war. I'm leaving placement phase, uh, starts tonight, uh, yeah, later today, and then the war starts tomorrow on uh, Monday, so yeah, I'll be gone, I'll be at the lake that day, so yeah, I won't be able to upload that last war, if I even have any fights, I might just be back up, uh, but yeah, I won't be uploading it for about a week, uh, I'm gonna be gone, I think I'm gonna be gone for about a week, come back for like a day, make some videos, and then going camping with my family so I'm going I'm basically going camping with my friends for a week and I'm going camping with my family for a week it just the schedules got really messed up and it was a really bad time because <laughs> there's like they're literally overlapping which is an, it's kind of annoying usually my, the camping trip with my family is in July and my friends would go in August but because of COVID uh the campsites weren't open here till August so yeah but yeah that's gonna do it for this war video guys hope you did enjoy if so drop a like uh subscribe if you'd like to see more Alliance War content uh hopefully we can still place in masters for this season I, as long as we win the next war we should be guaranteed masters so yeah thank you guys so much for watching peace out